to do this before I came up. I just guess I didn't do it. Green means go. We're good. All right. Well, um, it's fun to talk at somebody else's church because when you preach at your own, nobody ever claps when you come up. <laughs> so uh, anyway, um, I am going to share with you guys uh, something that's been a blessing to me since I don't know kind of where you've been or what's been happening here or, or uh, uh, kind of the, the world here. I'm just going to share something that's been a, a blessing to me, and I, I think it uh, I think really it's meant to be a blessing to, to every person on the planet. And the more clearly we see it, uh, the more we, we realize we really do have good news to bring to other people. But I'm going to share a, a moment in time for me. We all have these moments where something from God becomes clear. And uh, I had one of those moments, and it, it, it uh, was significant for me. And it's going to relate to that thing that, that uh, every single life struggles with at different times, especially when you believe in God. And um, every belief in God is tested when we experience hard things. And we, we uh, come to a knowledge of God. We start learning about God's love for us. We start to believe God's love for us and that God cares about us, and that he's for us. And then something happens, sometimes suddenly, sometimes just a long, slow grind, and we go, well, wait a minute. If God was loving me, this would be different. Uh, God, this is not loved, because you could make a difference, and you're not. And we wrestle with that. And every single believer in God really goes through a series of those moments as our faith grows and develops, and for some people, they don't survive that. They just cannot reconcile it. Um, and so uh, if you haven't, you will uh, face, those, face those moments. And I'm just going to talk about one time where God helped me uh, in with that. Uh, and um, I'm going to talk about God's heart. So it began for me with a, uh, a group of pastors, and we all went to the ark together in Kentucky. How many of you guys have been to the Ark, Ark Encounter in Kentucky? Well, um, if you haven't, it's a really interesting experience because it's a life-size replica of Noah's Ark. It was built by the Amish. It's built all out of wood. I think it's the largest wooden structure in the world or something like that, all these things that are amazing about it. And what's really amazing about it is how big it is. And they have, uh, it's a whole museum inside, and they have it all set up, like how could Noah really do this, and how he grew food inside, perhaps, and where they stored the water, and where the different kinds of animals were, and, uh, you know, you got to see the little dinosaurs on there, because uh, if you really understand all that, why dinosaurs were on the ark. And, and so I'm walking through this, and, and um, uh, Noah's account in Genesis has always been big for me ever since I was a biology major in college and uh, was a whole nother story of my life. But, but um, I'm kind of at the end at the back because I'm walking so slow. And, and I come to this mural. And it's this mural of uh, Genesis uh, chapter 1. Um, and it's great big on the wall. Let's see if I can get it to come up here. Let's see. What do I see what I'm seeing? What do I see what you're seeing? Blank, blank, blank. All right, I got to turn that on too. Is it still blank? Oh, okay, okay. Not there. Great. So this is the mural, and um, I found myself just standing in front of this mural, like captured. Um, and I stood there looking at that mural, and I looked at that, and for me, I believe that, that the account in Genesis is, is where we all really came from. I think it's really the history of the world. That's my understanding of that. that um, and, and what that means, as I look at that picture, is I came from those two people. Uh, those are my great, 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 it's actually about 150 greats, grandma and grandpa. And... Uh, um, and as I stood there looking at that picture, one of the things that struck me was that if that's history, then there really 
actually truly was some moment where two people stood in a situation like that, where they were there experiencing life for the very first time. And, and I thought about that, and, and I thought about, wow, what if that was me? What would I think of in that moment? I mean, I'm standing there in this astonishing world. And, and I look at that, and, you know, I, I'm still young enough at heart that there's that sense of adventure. And, and I look at that picture, and I go, this is incredible. And where is that water coming from? And look at those sauropods and, and, and just the wonder and the beauty and the glory of all of it. And, and I thought about, what am I looking at here if this is a real moment? I'm, I'm looking at God creating man in his image. And so this is man. These two people are in the image of God. And as God made them, what I understand is God said that they're made in our image. We're going to make them with our qualities. We're going to give them a curiosity. And we're going to give them a sense of adventure. And we're going to give them a sense of beauty and a love for color. And, and there's going to be this deep relational dimension to their nature. And they're going to love to relate to one another. And they're going to love to relate to us, said the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And, and they're, gonna, they're going to delight in all these particular things. And then God said... Let's make a world that perfectly and infinitely fulfills every single one of their desires. Let's make a world that just marvels them, an entire planet as a gift for them. And, and, and as I thought about that, I thought, this is the heart of God. A perfect father. You know, for you guys who are dads, I don't know exactly how it works for moms. I was a dad with four sons. And, man, did I love to give my boys things that they, they were just their eyes would just go. And nothing thrilled me more than being able to do that for them. I have that part of me because that is what God is like. And in this picture... I saw the heart of God, that his heart is to fulfill every single part of my desires, to make me in a way that every single thing that he gives me just totally fills that. This is the heart of God. And as we look at that picture, whoops, let's see, I'm going the wrong way. Um. We, I don't know what you want in your life. But you know what? I believe it's in that picture. Everything will fulfill and satisfy you. And I imagine myself, you know, and and, of course, where do our eyes go and we almost can't take them off of it? It's right in the center, right? The most beautiful woman in the world, because she's the only one. The most handsome man in the world, because he's the only one. You're standing there beside that person in a marriage literally made by God. A perfect relationship, no bad past, no brokenness to mess it up. The Spirit of God filling and flowing through you to everything else. Absolutely perfect love you experience in that relationship. Everything your heart desires is there. That is the heart of God. What does God want to give us? And what God spoke to me as I stood there staring at that mural, is that this is what God wants to give us. This is his desire. If he could do anything, this is what he would do, and this is what he did. And Bill Young, one of my good friends and co-pastors, uh, co came back finally and found me. He said, what are you doing back here? 
and he saw me staring at this wall, and he, and he, and he a- took a picture of this without me knowing it, and he blew it up in a big poster, and now it's over my desk at home. And this is what I sit and look at. I'm a reminder about the heart of God. But we don't live in that world now, do we? <laughs> you know, well, I'm not there now. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> and what happened? The God who made all of this, that God himself flowed into Can you imagine what this was supposed to become generation after generation after generation? How amazing, incredible, and wonderful it was going to be. It was going to be, it was going to be generations of marvel. And yet, in the craziness of this reality, there was a temptation and there was a choice and there was an instruction and there was a command. And and to just put it in a real simple way, this power cord that ran down into the creation and into Adam and Eve and it was plugged into God and all of the life came from God as his, who he was flowed down into it. Adam reached up and he grabbed that power plug and he ripped it out of God and he plugged it into himself. And all of a sudden, there's this huge screeching sound like a massive ocean liner hitting an iceberg and the whole side of it being ripped off and the whole thing just tilted and came to a massive crash. And God brought a judgment and a curse as that separation. And we in our humanness chose to look to ourselves and not to God. And it was a real event. And every single child after that was born with the plug (laughs) unplugged. And so we discover that we no longer live in that world. God's heart is the same. His heart's the same. Catch this, that first picture That's God's heart. It does not change. That's his heart toward every one of us. But I find myself living in the aftermath of a disaster. You guys recognize that picture? That's the Superdome in New Orleans. 2005, Hurricane Katrina. Remember all those pictures, how much we would see that? August 28th, I think, is, is the, the day people started coming into that in the morning. And, and uh, you can imagine what it would be like to live there in the very best of circumstances. What's going on there? All these people had a world. They had a life. There was a good plan for them. Somewhere they have a house. They have a world. And now they are here. They find themselves here. It's all gone. And what's happening in the best of circumstances? They're all fighting and squabbling about who has his cot a quarter of an inch over his line onto the other side, right? Well, get your stuff on your side. No, it's on my side. What are you doing over there? And they're all squabbling and they're all fighting. But it wasn't the best of circumstances. 24 hours later, the power went out. And then the emergency generator went out. There was no air conditioning, almost no light. And then the plumbing system failed and there were no toilets. And then the army didn't show up with the food that they promised. And these guys were living in a pretty hard world. Now they could go, I don't like this. I don't like this. It shouldn't be this way. And no doubt, many, many, many people struggle with that. But you know what? Their circumstances were not going to change until that was over. That is where they were. And you know what God says to us? He says to us, you are in a place that is now disconnected from me in the fullness of what it is in the reality of the creation, and it is not going to be what it was. To demand the good things of the original plan in the brokenness of this life, is to set our hearts on what cannot be now. 
It is not there anymore. Something fundamental has changed. It's bigger than us. And if you really study the theology of it, you can make logical, intellectual sense out of it. But as we live in this life, and we are sick, or children are sick, or or jobs are lost, or money is not there, it still is overwhelming but the heart of God, this is, where we, this is where I was brought to, but the heart of God is the same. So how do I explain this? Well, one of the things Jesus tells us is that the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. That's the devil, and he did that. He destroyed, he destroyed. But then Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And so Jesus says, this is what I can give you now. I can give you an abundant life now. Just like Jesus had with his father. Jesus walked on this earth, and you know what? Almost nothing went right for him. It says he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. What did he have? He experienced an abundant life in relationship with his father. And God does bring good here. And God says that he gives us all things for our enjoyment. And you and I are still meant to enjoy life. And there's a lot of life I enjoy. I enjoy a lot of life. And there are many good things here. But Jesus tells each one of us, the bottom line is there are times where nothing other than your own personal connection with God will make this life livable. And I've been studying a variety of social things, and one of them is suicide, and suicide is skyrocketing. And you know why that's happening? It's because people look at their circumstances and go, there's nothing that makes this worth it. There's nothing that makes this worth it. And without God, you can reach that point where you say there's nothing that makes this worth it. But there is a real experience God can have in us, a real experience we can have with God through the Holy Spirit, where we sense that he's, he cares, we sense that he's there. God can help us. God does answer prayer. That doesn't mean all of our circumstances will change. But there is something that you can find that Jesus knew with his Father that's real. And that's what he asks us now Just like the Father asked Jesus, you must live in your relationship with me. And Jesus, many, many things are going to go wrong for you. You must live walking with me. And Jesus says the same thing to us. There are people all over the world suffering in unbelievable, unimaginable ways. God watches that every day. There's a day coming when it's going to end. And he asks us, like he did, to patiently live in faith in those challenges. He may take away your American way of life. Well, he won't take it away, but he may allow it to be taken away. He may allow many things to be lost. Do you have a faith that's ready for that? And you might go, well, that's not enough. I can't do it on that. And you know what? I agree and God agrees. You can't do it on that. You've got to have more. You've got to have hope. And God gives us that. And Jesus told his followers when they were very, very discouraged, he said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And then we read later in the Bible, it says this, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you that is totally beyond what you can imagine. It's totally beyond anything that could even enter your mind. It's it's." You, you, nobody's seen it, nobody's heard it, nobody's even thought of it. But I prepared for those who have their hope in me. And, and there is a day coming where the heart of God 
again is fully expressed for you if your hope and your heart and your trust is in that God. He says, my father heart will not be denied. I will brighten their eyes again. And God says there's a moment where all this ends. And we're told there's a new heaven and a new earth. Now the dwelling of God is with men. God is with us, and he'll live with them. They'll be his people, and God himself will be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. The old order. You are living in the old order. It is so broken. The cord is unplugged. The cord is unplugged. It was created to run on God, and it's unplugged. And this order does not work very well at all. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And the cord gets plugged back into God. There is a new world, and we are there forever. And this is my third picture. I have three pictures that I, that I wanted to use to share this lesson for me. This is another picture that was huge for me. I can't remember where I got this one, but I just kept looking at it and looking at it. My wife finally took it, put a verse on it, and made a poster out of this one. This one's in my exercise room. I don't have a picture of the Superdome. But this, I never get tired of looking at that. I tell people it's my favorite picture of me. This is my favorite picture of me. I very much imagine that moment. And you know what? God wants you to have that be your favorite picture of you. And when this moment happens, the heart of God is going to be fully and completely released to bring us into a world where every single desire that you have, every single thing you were made by God to enjoy will all be completely fulfilled forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. It will never, ever end. And I believe that. And it changes how I look at life. And so I go back and I look at the old beginning, God's heart. God's heart, this is God's heart. And and I think about... This is an astonishing world, God. There's no way you had to do this. Everything from butterflies to dinosaurs. And and I think about the whole dinosaur thing, you know, and how they fascinate people all over the world. There's something about them. So what were they made for? Well, if if this Bible account is true, which, which is how I understand all of it, those were made for you and I to look at. They were made for us. You know, like we like to look at the elephants in the zoo. I love to see the elephants. They're just so amazing. Well, imagine going and seeing those guys. I can imagine God making them earlier in the day, and he said, oh, they're really going to like these. This is going to brighten their eyes. Let's make them just a little bigger. Yes, because he wants to delight us. So I want you to think about the heart of God. Why did those exist? What are we capable of? I just want you to catch that in a clip from a movie that you probably saw years ago. And can we turn audio up on that? species of veriform has been extinct since the Cretaceous period. I mean, this thing is a hunt this thing. Why?
lives. There's a dinosaur. Uh -huh. Look at this tear up the little book on it. Cold bloodedness, it doesn't apply. It totally wrong. It's a warm bodied creature. This thing doesn't live in a swamp. This thing's got what a 25, 27 foot neck. Rachiosaurus 30. <laughs> God welcoming us into right here? What is he opening the door for us to right here? What is on the other side of the three people represented there? What world waits for you? What is your father made for you? I believe it's really there. The heart of God once again will be fully and completely expressed for us. Everything you were ever made to know, have, and experience will be there. Awaiting. He asks us to be patient. To live the abundant life we can have now in the spirit. To walk with him. To, be, to wait. To suffer to believe, and to have hope. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray you grant us faith in this. It, it isn't just a thing of knowledge. It's a thing of, of, of trust. Lord, I believe this is true. I just am so convinced uh, I'm going to enter that place where I'm standing in front of you. There's going to be that hug. There's going to be that greeting. There's going to be that, that maybe that word, John, it's over. <laughs> and John, it's just starting. Lord, thank you for that. I can't wait. Sometimes I think about what I'm going to do on the other side of that hug. Give us that hope, Lord. It's all real. You're there now, and you're making it for us. In Jesus' name, amen.